welcome back to Waffle TV sponsored by West Beer. We are here in Greyfriars Kirkyard with Paul Foote. Paul, you've just come out of your show Words. How was it tonight? It was very nice, a lovely audience. It was very nice fun. It was good to get into the show again because I had a night off last night mm. and I went to London and did a show there. But completely different show. Yeah. So I'm back into Words now. Can you tell us a little bit about Words? The kind of comedy, I, I know it's surrealist comedy, but what, what can audience, it, audiences expect from it? I don't, I don't even know if it is. I suppose it's surreal. I don't even analyse it. Mm. I don't know. Cause once someone said, is it surrealist or is it absurdist? And I didn't really know. I try not to think too much about it because otherwise I'd go mad and I wouldn't be able to. I just create stupid things in my bedroom <laughs> and then I don't analyse it. I just make silly ideas up and think, oh, and, and it's not, uh, you know, sometimes people think that um, with uh, comedians like me who are a bit unusual, that we, we don't try to be unusual. I just do what is the most obvious norm. It seems obvious and just the obvious things that I think, oh, that would be a good idea. And then it's for other people then say, you're very unusual, <laughs> absurd, surrealist. I just, um, I just make silly things up, really, and then make a living from it. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you how did you get in stand up? I mean, I read somewhere that you you really wanted to meet Ella Fitzgerald, and so you thought this was the, this was the career. Yes, but she died within one month of me starting in comedy, so I didn't meet her. But I didn't want to meet her now anyway. Well, a, I wouldn't want to meet her because she's dead. But B, I wouldn't want to meet her because because I realised that. Famous people are just people. So it'd be very boring, probably. Mm -hmm. Like, just because she's a great singer, she's probably be very awkward, little awkward small talk. And then yeah. maybe just like a, maybe a, a tea party that just goes on a bit too long with constant sort of like excuses, like everyone just saying, oh, I must have popped the loo and things like that, because they don't, <laughs> don't even want to be there, really. But just going on a bit too long. Yeah. and knowing that my taxi doesn't arrive for two hours and we're just sort of filling in. <laughs> so I'm glad we didn't meet because it would have been a disaster. Have you had many, many celebrity dinner parties and experiences similar to that then? Uh, yes, I have had uh, uh, evenings with celebrities yeah. and it can be quite, um, quite trying. <laughs> so you, you studied math. Yeah. And now you're, you're a stand-up comedian. It seems like quite a, a, an odd transition, really. Yes, well, it wasn't even a transition, really. I just was doing maths, and then I liked, thought I'd have a go at stand-up comedy, and I liked it, and then I just became a comedian. Mm. And that was it, and then I just forgot about maths immediately. That's like another person did that. It's like, just looked like a chapter of my life that's just the door's been closed on. I don't even think about it. I can't even remember it, really. I mean, I was once doing a student show, and I thought it was like in a campus somewhere. And I thought, oh, it's really nice here. Yeah. Then I thought, oh, I'd like to go to university. That would be fun. And then <laughs> about five minutes later, I remembered I'd gone to university, but I'd forgotten all about it. It's like someone else had done it. Wow. I'm just in show business now. I don't think about very old maths times. So you've, you've come to the Fringe previously, a few times actually, with, with different shows. Yes. Why do you keep coming back to, to Edinburgh? What is so attractive about it? Well, basically, every year, people like Aaron, who works for me and Ian, they say that it's going to transform my career. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It never does. <laughs> but every year... You never know. You know. <laughs> but they only want to come because it's a free trip for them to come to Edinburgh, you see. But, but they, um, when we get there, if I even, like, it used to be that they would sort of drop it in later on in the run. But now they just straight out with it. Like on even on the plane coming up here, they said we tricked you, Paul. They said your career is going nowhere, but we are going somewhere. We're going to Edinburgh <laughs> for basically a holiday, yeah. paid for by me. So basically, uh, this is uh, this is well, it's a big drain on my bank account and on my spiritual well-being and general <laughs> happiness. But I do enjoy. I love the shows. They're great fun. That's the only thing I enjoy. I enjoy the shows. Not mm -hmm. working with these people. Pen pushers, hangers on. Yeah. So the shows and, and the local graveyards. Paul, Paul recommended oh, yes, this location yes. today. Um, slightly out of the ordinary for what we usually do, but. Well, I thought it would be an appropriate place because it would remind 
staff members of the fragility of life and indeed of the death of their careers. Is they going to get a sack? I'm going to make a stand this time. Okay. I'm going to make a stand. <laughs> well, well, on that note, Paul, oh, yes. <laughs> you can see words all the way until the 25th of August. Yeah, the 25th. 7.30 p.m. over at Underbelly in Cowgate and definitely go check it out. It is an amazing show, so please, please go and see it. Thank you so much for chatting Oh, thank you today. very much. We'll thank see you. you soon. Oh, bye. Thank you. bye. <laughs>